Thank you everyone for joining us this morning for the um, second day of our Anchor Collection Virtual Sales Week. We kicked off yesterday with uh, our new partner Albemarle in Germany and now uh, moving on to the beautiful country of Italy and the city of Rome. So um, this morning uh, we're going to have a presentation from Jessica and I think Courtney and Giovanna and Sergio. So um, welcome ladies and gentlemen. Um, very excited to go through um, the presentations and the videos and hopefully you'll learn a little bit about Rome that you didn't know. Even Anna, who's obviously been there a lot, hopefully you'll know a little, get to know a little something else. I'm um, so sure. during the present, and I also want to welcome um, Chris Lynn, who's um, with Anchor Collection, currently based in um, Northampton in UK. Um, hopefully sometime we'll be back in the US. Um, Chris will be uh, moderating the, the um, uh, chat during the presentation. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat and Chris will interject uh, and ask Jessica or whoever it is on the team with those questions. And then we will open it up at the end for a question and answer session if anybody has anything at the end. Um, but during the presentation, you will be muted. So um, at the end, if you need to speak, please just unmute yourself. So um, I am just gonna make sure everybody is muted. Okay, and then I'm just gonna make Jessica the presenter and then we can kick off. Let me be one second. Okay, Jessica. Great, thank Over you, Cheryl. Over to you, my dear. Yay, okay. So, good morning, good afternoon, and buona sera from Rome. Uh, my name is Jessica Loesch, and I am the VP of Business Development here at Effetto Italy DMC. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I am thrilled to host this webinar and to have a chance to take you through a different side of our beloved and beautiful city of Rome. But first, let's talk a little bit about me. <laughs> 20 years ago, as a native New Yorker, I came to Rome with the opportunity to work in the mice industry. Along the way, I fell in love with the industry, fell in love with Rome, and fell in love with my Italian husband, and never left. 20 years later, my Roman holiday is still going strong, and we even have a little girl who's half Italian and half American, a true testament of my love affair with Italy. I consider myself a local Roman with an American eye if you will, an Aperol spritz with a twist. And while needless to say, I do have a piece of my heart in New York, there's no place like Rome. So before we dive into the hidden side of Rome, I would like to introduce it, Effetto Italy, my team, and our approach to the mice market, and in particular, our sparkle, um, and what we will cover today on our webinar. So with that said, I'm just gonna share my screen and we will have a look. at a few slides that tell a little story about us. So, meet Effetto, a boutique DMC for all your needs. Effetto is the Italian word for effect, result, impression. And we feel that's exactly what we leave. Established in 2010 with headquarters right in the heart of Rome, we have 18 full-time employees and we cover every inch of Italy, the mainland and the islands. Our markets include mice, special interest, luxury individual travel, and much, much more. But Effetto is about innovation and creativity. That is our mantra. We like to have our clients experience little known destinations in Italy, present new approaches and perspectives, reveal hidden corners, organize unique activities, and in particular, discover new venues, providing entertainment with an Italian flair always. We work all over Italy, from the snowy peaks of the Dolomites in the Alps, all the way down to the southern tip in Sicily. Effetto is everywhere. Now, I know you're probably all aching to get on a plane and come here, and we just did receive word that things are opening up and all these quarantine restrictions have been lightened. This has just come in. So we thought we'd give you a little geography refresh anyway of our beautiful boot. Uh, here's the boot of Italy, Rome right in the center, the, cap center, the capital of the country going up north a little bit, Florence and the beautiful Tuscany, the very, very romantic Venice, the ever so fashionable Milan with the Lake District of Como and Maggiore, and the not as well known but incredibly beautiful town of Turin. Traveling down south below Rome is the very well known Naples and popular Amalfi Coast. 
And we can't forget about our two sister islands, Sicily and Sardinia. And last but not least, a very popular and trendy spot in Italy right now, Puglia. As we know, Italy has always been a top travel destination. And one of the challenges we face as a DMC is that guests feel that they already know the city. So the challenge for us, in particular for traditional destinations, is how to keep our clients marveled and surprised. Our goal is to keep traditional cities like Rome and Florence new and unexpected, return after return. How do we do that? Well, we're gonna look at that today, firsthand in our webinar, cultivating relationships with locals, testing new paths throughout the country. We call these people our gatekeepers and paths we discover our secret doors. They represent the key to unlock some of the best hidden treasures of the country. Now today, while we would love to show you everything we have here in this fabulous country, because of our restrictions, our presentation is going to be focused on our home city, Rome. We hope this journey will show you indeed something new, Rome from a different angle. We will introduce you to some of our talented gatekeepers and take you through some of our do doors that add extra spice to our programs. So let me just stop my share. Okay. So can you, can you hear me and see me? Okay, good. We have a really fun adventure planned for all of you tonight. So buckle up as we take you on a virtual ride through Rome. I'm going to take this, turn this over to our managing director, Sergio Poeta, who will show you a very different side of a very famous place here in Rome. Sergio, prego. Hello, I'm Sergio Poeta, and I'm the managing director at the FETA. I'm a native of Rome and I've worked in the mice industry for 30 years, for over 30 years. The one thing I've learned is that you can never know everything about your own destination, not even about Italy. There's nothing I love more than discovering something new and interesting about the same place that I've been uh, going back and forth for years. And after having lived here for most of my life, I'm very pleased that these discoveries still happen all the time. Today, I would like to take you to a place that you probably all experienced already, the Vatican. As many of you know, the Vatican has long been a destination for the mice industry. And after hours, private viewing of Sistine Chapel is a wonderful thing to witness and a classic of the incentive uh, industry. But if you know the right people, there are more exclusive experiences uh, for you or to offer to your clients. Accessing the off-limits grounds of the Inner Vatican, attend a private concert specially set up for your party inside the Vatican, or dedicate a private mass at St. Peter's Basilica to your participants, Catholic or of any other denomination, it's something new. So please watch this video. Siamo qui dentro al Vaticano nella canonica con Monsignor Pablo Colino che è il maestro emerito della cappella di San Pietro e per 25 anni è stato il maestro del coro eh, di San Pietro e adesso è prefetto della musica in Vaticano, senatore di San Pietro, canonico di San Pietro. Gli chiediamo di dirci dove siamo, ecco. che cos'è questo posto? Ecco. Noi, eh, in italiano o in inglese? Eh, sì, beh, beh, vorrei, vorrei in inglese, però il mio inglese è molto è, è catastrofico. <laughs> Good morning, how are you? Well, I am very well. 
però mi dispiace non poter proseguire perché mi sono dedicato a una lingua superiore all'inglese, allo spagnolo, all'italiano, al tedesco, al francese e la lingua della musica. Perché come ha detto Debussy, la musica è un linguaggio, è una lingua che inizia dove finiscono le parole. Noi ci troviamo nel palazzo della canonica, cioè vuol dire il palazzo accanto alla basilica. È un privilegio poter abitare in questo appartamento perché questo, è questo appartamento al quarto piano è l'appartamento che era riservato niente meno che per Michelangelo Buonarroti, l'architetto della, della cupola e anche, come sapete, della, della Sistina. Può darsi che sia venuto qui in questo, a questo piano, al quarto piano, perché di qua si vede e si può controllare la cupola. I nostri ospiti che vengono a Roma per fare i convegni, i congressi, sì, gli incentivi, sì. i medici, che cosa possono fare qui in Vaticano? Sì, qui eh, sono venuti dalla Pennsylvania, per esempio, dalla California, dalla Florida e, e, e anche da New York. Sempre, mh, come dico, la Basilica è aperta. Possiamo organizzare una messa proprio privata per un determinato gruppo, è la Basilica cantiamo noi o se vogliamo fare come tipo concerto allora il, il posto indicato è meglio la, la, la chiesa del Camposanto Teutonico loro eh, senz'altro ci accolgono sempre con molta, con molta fetta Thank you, Sergio. Um, from a very personal uh, experience, there is something really magical about being in the heart of Rome and entering into a completely different country with a passport control, the Vatican City State. Remember, it's possible to organize special private events, masses and concerts within the walls of the Vatican City. Truly a memorable and once in a lifetime experience for your guests, thanks to our delightful gatekeeper, Monsignor Colino. Next, I'm going to turn things over to my lovely colleague and longtime friend, Courtney Reagan Stewart, all the way from Boston, Massachusetts. Courtney is our director of marketing, who is our eyes and ears on the ground in America. She keeps our fingers on the pulse of American culture, and she's going to talk about something very important that, quite frankly, is one of the reasons why I'm still here today, pasta. Can you hear me? Great. Uh, thank you, Jessica. Uh, my name is Courtney Regan Stewart, and I'm the director of marketing at Affetto. Hello, everybody. So um, unlike the rest of the company, I'm actually based in Boston, which makes it very easy for me to stay on top of American trends. So speaking of trends, I would say that one of the greatest things to come out of the pandemic this year was an actor by the name of Stanley Tucci. First, he regaled us on Instagram with his perfectly made Negroni. And then he hosted a wonderful program on CNN called Searching for Italy. So in episode two, he travels to Rome and he's in search of authentic uh, Italian cuisine. And he finds a tiny little restaurant in the Pantheon Square called Da Armando al Pantheon. So people, as, as you all know, people all over the world know and love Italian cuisine. Um, but authentic Italian food is not necessarily what you might taste in first class restaurants in London and Manhattan and Melbourne. Uh, and even the uh, 
you know, Michelin starred restaurants in Rome and Milan that are highly praised in guidebooks, they, they serve dishes that are often more adapted to an international palate. A true Italian cuisine is strictly local. Um, Italian cuisine is like, it's like a patchwork of dozens and dozens of cuisines making this amazing Italian quilt. Uh, you know, it's recipes that use ingredients from the region, uh, dishes that one can prepare at home, and very, very simple rules. No tomatoes with vinegar, uh, no, no fish with cheese, um, only seasonal vegetables, no butter. And really, this is a food philosophy. Um, so where do you go to find these places that stick to this philosophy? Because you're not gonna find them in a guidebook. These places are small, they're often family run, they've been around for years, and they're true hidden gems. Uh, and you honestly, need, you need a gatekeeper and uh, this gatekeeper can help uh, to unlock these secret doors. So I mentioned Stanley Tucci and he introduced us to the restaurant Da Armando on his show. And it just so happens that Chef Claudio from Armando is one of our very close friends and just one of those gatekeepers. Uh, so in the next video, you'll see at the end, um, he is going to actually illustrate just how simple our cuisine is. So simple, it will be summarized in a mere 45 seconds. So get to that to watch. But uh, I do want to point out that we have these connections all over Italy, uh, Venice, Florence, Turin, Bari, no matter where you are, and we can find the perfect little local experience for your mice uh, guests. Uh, so onto the video, take a look. The family-run restaurant Armando Al Pantheon has been protecting Roman culinary traditions since 1961. And there's nobody better to take us through Armando's culinary philosophy than my dear friend Fabiana, who happens to be a part of the Armando family and daughter to Chef Claudio. Ciao Fabiana! Ciao Jessica, how are you? I'm hungry. Well, so, andiamo. Andiamo. Allora, Fabiana, tell us a little bit about this incredible Roman empire that you and your family have been building for three generations. What is Armando's philosophy? So I think that the be authentic is the reason for our success. Usually in the restaurant, I really like to suggest local wine. We promote the local wine. About this, do you like to have a test of red wine from this area? Brava, Fabiana, you know me. <laughs> of course I will have a taste of red wine. Okay. So I give you a test, the Cesanese grape. This is the only red grapes that we have in this area, mm -hmm. and uh, I hope that you like, enjoy. Thank you. And buonissimo, Fabiana. Isn't it true that you also, because we have collaborated together in the past, that you organize very special events within Armando? We like to, uh, to suggest to do some lesson with the food, and after I show different uh, bottles of wine, uh, so we can compare food and wine together. Well, we have a special treat today with your father, Chef. Claudio Gargioli, who is going to prepare for us firsthand my favorite traditional pasta in Rome. Shall we call him? Yes, okay. of course. Uh, Claudio, papà! Eccomi qua. Allora. Buongiorno, Chef Claudio. Bene. bene, grazie. Te? Bene, bene, grazie. Che piacere stare oggi con te qui in questo meraviglioso posto. Mi fa piacere. Siamo diventati, nell'arco di 60 anni che ci siamo, uno dei punti di riferimento della cucina tradizionale romana. Quindi Fantastico. siamo molto contenti. Cosa ci prepari oggi? Allora, io oggi farei un'idea. Ti farei una bella amatriciana che è un piatto tipico, ma veramente tipico, il principe della cucina romana. Benissimo, allora cosa aspettiamo? Andiamo! Vado, vado! <ride> vado. Per quattro persone taglio 120 g di guanciale in quadretti. Metto 40 g di pepe a tostare in padella per tre minuti. Verso il pepe in un mortaio e lo pesto. Butto 400 g di ricatone Metto il guanciale in padella senza olio fino a quando il grasso non si è sciolto. Tolgo il guanciale e lascio il grasso in padella. Al grasso aggiungo il pomodoro croccante. Scolo la pasta direttamente nella padella e aggiungo il guanciale croccante e un po' di pecorino romano. 
rimestolo in piatto e metto ancora pecorino e il pepe a pioggia questa è la matriciana uno dei piatti più buoni della cucina romana fantastico assaggia la vedrai grazie chef amazing So good. <laughs> the best amatriciana in all of Rome, in my personal opinion. And as Courtney had mentioned, 45 seconds for that recipe. Uh, Armando was a true representation of classic Roman cuisine. And keep in mind, we know gatekeepers like Fabiana and Armando-like restaurants in every town across Italy. So whether you're planning a meeting in Milan or an incentive in Puglia, we can get you in the door. Now, let me introduce you to my amazing colleague, the glue and backbone, if you will, to my team, who I would be lost without, my Director of Operations, Giovanna Venier. Giovanna, prego. Yes, thank you, Jessica. Hi, everybody. Um, so as just Jessica just said, I'm Giovanna, Director of Operations here at the FETO. Um, I just would like to say that uh, one of the biggest questions we usually get is um, how can I incorporate more authentic experiences into my mind's program? So I would say that whether you need to feel some time of leisure during a conference or are looking for a once in a lifetime activities for your incentives, of course it's best to look off the hidden track. So that's why we have more and more gatekeepers in our undiscovered room corners. So just to name a few, we have um, Miss Carla, who makes the healthiest gelato in town fresh every morning, or Sora Mirella, who detains the recipe uh, of the most traditional grappa checca, which is um, a strictly Roman dessert uh, made of hand-shaped ice and syrup. Or just to mention another one, uh, Max Panella, the best pizza and slices, which is, by the way, nested behind um, the Basilica of St. Mary Major, a place you wouldn't find it. So, um, which is the best way to reach and see all of them? It's like local, on a scooter, of course, or on a sidecar, which is, I think, a really special way to see the city. So let's have a look.
Thank you, Giovanna. I can tell you all firsthand that while I have organized many, many Vespas for my clients, this was a first time for me to actually ride and sit in a sidecar. Epic is the word that comes to mind and a little bit scary in the beginning, <laughs> but it was amazing, an amazing experience. And remember, we can apply this concept to any city in Italy, connecting guests to our local gatekeepers through fun and exciting modes of transportation, not only Vespas, but golf carts, bicycles, vintage cars, and even gondolas. So our webinar is coming to a close. Um, but before we close, we hope you've been able so far to see and experience a Rome from a different perspective, one that is very accessible if you know the right people. And while we only focused on Rome today, please be aware that we can offer these products in any region, city, or town throughout mainland Italy and the islands. Before we go, we wanted to show you one more concept, one that we call Drone Your Event. Gala dinners, activities, parades, and even indoor performances look more glamorous from up high and from above. We can drone your events all the way through from start to finish. And on that note, we have a very special treat for you, a unique view of Rome, in fact, never really before seen. A quiet, still, empty, peaceful Rome during our lockdown. And quite frankly, a little bit sad. At the time when the world was on hold, a peculiar moment, not only our city was not used to, to living through, we're a city that's, that's used to 10 million tourists per year, but we also wanted to inhale and appreciate the very brief moment and stillness that we knew would not last forever. A moment for us Romans to have all of our treasures to ourself, even if just for a minute. So we hired our own drone to capture our own silent Rome from the sky. We hope you enjoy it. Grazie.
Thank you so much, Jessica and team at Effectivity. That was amazing. And I think move over Stanley Tucci. I think Jessica, you've got a another career as a food and travel host. <laughs> Did a great job there. Thank um, you. <laughs> I can't. And it was actually interesting. I think one of the last cities I was before lockdown was actually in Rome. So I can't wait to go back. Um, and I know we've got some questions. So Chris, would you like to just unmute and um, follow up on some of the questions we've got in the in the chat? Absolutely. No. Great job, Efeto. I am definitely, it's top of my list now. You've been elevated to number one for me to travel there next. Uh, but no, the first question um, is from Carol. With regards to uh, the kind of COVID restrictions, um, which regions were hardest hit and which fared the best? But moving forward, will everybody be uh, subject to the same rules or will it be regionalized? So, do you want to grab this? Yep. Um, well, as of today, we're basically, as of yesterday, as a matter of fact, we are now all uh, uh, in what we call white status, which means that basically all the restrictions have been lifted and uh, the whole of Italy is in the same condition, except for the Valle d'Aosta, which is an alpine uh, region up uh, in the uh, north uh, west of the country. So hopefully, uh, if we do not go back to um, restrictions anywhere, we'll be uh, all the same uh, level from now on. And uh, by the way, it's just uh, uh, it's just news today that uh, the uh, quarantine that we've been uh, keeping our Americans guests uh, forced to until today has been lifted. So no more 10 days quarantine for anybody now, except for the Brits, unfortunately. Um, so right now it looks like we're all, uh, we're all back to sort of normalcy. We'll still have to hold uh, to our masks uh, outdoors until probably the first week in July. And then that's gonna be lifted too. Uh, distancing, social distancing will probably stay there for another couple of months, if not until uh, school time in October. But other than that, you know, we're back to sort of normal life. We hope that none of these variants will hit us uh, as hard as it did uh, in other countries. And if that all continues uh, as it is now, we're all back to a normal life. Over 60% of the Italians are now vaccinated. And by the end of September, we're supposed to be vaccinated 100%, or at least those that want to be vaccinated, uh, including the school, um, school uh, kids. Uh, and then there's still, you know, like in the States and like anywhere else, there's a portion of the country of no vax that will stay non, uh, not vaccinated. We'll hope that is not going to influence uh, uh, the rest of the country. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, to the next question, focusing on the Vatican, um, what is the ideal group sizes and are there limits to the numbers that can uh, do an experience there? Well, it really depends on uh, what you're up for. If it's a concert that you want to attend, uh, probably about 100, 150 people. If it's a private mass, which is a grand thing, because what you do is you basically have a, a, a wing or a part of uh, St. Peter's Reserve for your uh, for your group, and uh, a priest that would uh, would address sometimes a bishop. A Monsignor that will address a, um, um, a speech specifically to your uh, uh, group of participants, um, uh, talking about your own business, talking about why it is so important to visit St. Peter and attend a Mass in Rome, which is a capital of Catholicism in a way or another. Then you can go up to 500 people because uh, the largest section of St. Peter is that can be reserved is up to 500 people. Great. Does that answer the question? Thank you. Yes, that's perfect. Um, the others were really uh, just great comments. Um, everyone is already, I think, uh, packing their bags uh, and finding their passports to travel to Italy. But if anybody has any other questions, please uh, feel free to unmute yourself and uh, ask away. And I think the rest of us are getting ready to cook pasta for lunch. 
because <laughs> that was making us really hungry. <laughs> but I just want to say thank you very much to everybody this morning for um, for joining us, and thank you very much for the Factor team for all the work they put into it. That was um, just really, really interesting, inspiring, and exciting. So um, I think everybody's looking forward to coming back to Rome. If you do want to review anything, we, we have recorded this this morning, and it will be hosted on the Anchor Collection events page, as from probably Friday, um, and will also be on the Anchor Collection uh, YouTube channel as well by the weekend. So if you do need to review um, any of the videos or any information, it will be on there. Um, and when you're planning your next next um, group or incentive to Rome, please, please let me know, let Chris know, let Jessica know, and we'd um, love to be able to help you with, with your future groups. But thank you very much uh, for joining us today and enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. And if you'd like to join any of the other um, presentations the rest of the week, uh, we have Spain and Portugal tomorrow and Mykonos on Thursday. And again, you can register on the um, Anchor Collection events page on the website. So thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Ciao. You.